So good evening, everyone. My name is Cindy Meisner, and I'm a program coordinator at Okanagan College. And we wanted to welcome you to the Medical Office Assistant Certificate Information Session. So thank you to everyone for joining us. So first off, I thought I'd introduce our panel to you. Um, myself, I've been a part of Okanagan College for 24 years. I've been a program coordinator for over 12 years. And I've been involved with the Medical Office Assistant Program during all of my time at Okanagan College. And um, I'm excited to share more information about the program as it was newly revised um, in the past year. And we're really proud of the changes that we've made to the program to enhance your learning and skills that you gain from the program. And I'll let Jill Headland introduce herself. Hello, everybody. I'm a program coordinator. I'm based in the, Pen at the Penticton campus. Um, and I've been with the college for just about 14 years and involved with this program for the majority of that time. Um, so I'm here tonight really to, to support Cindy and her wing person. I'll be trying to answer your questions as best I can if you put them in the Q&A box. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. And Kelly, we'll let you introduce yourself as well. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly. I am been a medical office instructor for about eight years. I'm also a health unit clerk instructor and a medical administrative assistant instructor. So I've got the best of all, all worlds that I can share with you. And I've also been in the medical field professionally for about 15 years. So a lot of experience to talk about, a lot of teaching and mentoring to, to show you and share with you. And I'm really excited to have you. Great. Thanks, Kelly. So we'll just quickly review the agenda just so you have an idea of what we'll be covering tonight. So we'll talk about the rewards of being an MOA. Uh, we'll give you a brief overview of the program. And then uh, Kelly will introduce you to each of the different modules just to give you a deeper understanding of what the program involves. And then, of course, we'll discuss employment opportunities because, you know, that's why everybody is taking this program is ulti ultimately to get a job. And then what your next steps are, if you've applied or not. And then, of course, we'll follow up with questions at the end. And as we've mentioned, um, a quick way to ask questions throughout the presentation is just to put them in the Q&A box. You just click on the Q&A icon and then put your message in there and then click send. And then Jill will be answering those questions while Kelly and I are presenting, or she'll ask us to answer it live if it's something relative to what we're talking about. All right. So first off, I will let Kelly talk about the rewards of an MOA career. Great, thanks, Cindy. So there are lots and lots of rewards to an MOA career, but I think one of the main rewards is being able to be a clinical um, assistant to a doctor in a medical office or in a specialty or in a practice, um, building relationships with your staff and your patients, your clinicians, and working within a team and being able to really give to your job and have something rewarding back. Some of the perks are obviously not having to work evenings and weekends, sometimes weekends, depending on the clinic that you're in but benefits, vacation pay, especially if you're starting out with a young family, all of those are really good perks to working in a team environment and lots of room for opportunity. Perfect, thanks Kelly. So a program overview. So the next intake of medical office assistant is scheduled to start January 11th, and then it will continue until July 23rd and you would follow that up with your practicum uh, of 90 hours. And how this program is structured, it's Tuesday and Thursday evenings starting at 6 p.m. Some classes could go until 9 p.m. Every class is a little bit different. Uh, we do start um, right at six o'clock every night and the length of the class as far as lecturing will vary from instructor to course to the next one. And then, of course, Saturday mornings as well. We would start right at nine o'clock 
and then classes are scheduled till 1 p.m. So the tuition for the program is $3,699. And unfortunately, this program currently isn't available for student loans. So I just wanted to point that out. The only textbook that you're required to purchase for this program is a textbook for medical terminology. It's called the Language of Medicine, and it's around $100. You're able to purchase that through our bookstore or you can purchase it online. And what I'll do is I'll let Kelly talk about the delivery style. Uh, we call it an online hybrid because we offer the lecturing in an online synchronous format where classes do start at six o'clock in the evenings, Tuesdays and Thursdays and nine o'clock on Saturday mornings. But there's also going to be other opportunities for working independently. That's true. So you'll have me Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday where we can interact. Is it Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Cindy, or is it only Tuesday, Thursday? Tuesday, Thursday, and then Saturday. So. Okay, so we're gonna have time to interact. I'll be able to lecture with you. I'll be able to work through assignments with you on those key days. And then on the off days, the asynchronous is when you're going to actually take it upon yourself to work through your schedule, complete your assignments, but that is gonna be on your own. So I will be always available during email, for email if you are stuck with any questions, but you can always save it for those days and we can discuss um, in class, any questions, any struggles that you might be having at that time. So we do have a classroom environment on those specific days. And then on the days that you are ACER and Kearness, you're on your own for your studying time. Thanks, Kelly. So I think right now we'll just uh, take a pause here and we'll ask a poll question. And if you can just answer on your screen, we're asking if you have ever applied, if you've applied so far to the medical office assistant program. And this will give us an idea of how best to focus the presentation. And once I have all of you uh, responding, then we'll show what the results are. So we got the majority have responded. So most people have applied to the program and we have one that plans to. I'll just share the results there. And so that's awesome. So uh, this is a great way to orientate you and for you to ask specific questions before we get even that much closer to the time of the program start date. Okay, so on to the next slide then. I will have Kelly do a brief introduction of each of the different courses, starting with medical terminology. Okay, guys, so what you're going to be learning in med terminology is basically your word structuring. So how are medical words created? How are they linked and what do they mean? As well as 10 body systems. So you're going to be learning all of those things that we call prefixes, suffixes, root words, and basically learning a new language. So that's one thing that I really want to point out that is a little bit tricky for some people is that it is different from the English language. So you might feel a little bit overwhelmed in the beginning, but by the end, you're gonna be a pro and it's a great course with an amazing. Great. So next we're moving into pharmacology and this actually piggy banks on medical terminology. So the abbreviations that you're gonna learn in medical terminology are gonna spill over into pharmacology which is basically classifications of medication, names, generic brand names, how are they administered, dosages, interactions. So that's what you learn in your pharmacology course so that you can understand what the doctor is prescribing to the patient. And computers and transcription. So we're gonna learn to do some word. Um, for those of you that might not have a, a big background using word programs, we're gonna touch on that. We're going to touch on spreadsheets. We're going to learn how to do some medical transcription. And that's going to include progress notes, um, discharge summaries, chart notes, all of those kinds of things that you're going to need to learn to be able to assist your
And then we move on to the office systems, which is the exciting part. So this is where you learn to use the electronic EMR. And that is what we use to schedule our patients, what we use to bill for our doctors. Um, we do all kinds of things this type of board, scheduling, billing, coding. So you'll really get the sense of how a doctor's office is run and how we schedule our patients throughout the day. Kelly, I'll just mention when you turn your head sideways, it's harder to hear you. So oh, just okay. a FYI. Okay, perfect. And then we move into our medical office procedures course. So this course itself is actually a hybrid between an administrative type of course along with clinical. So you're going to learn vital signs, um, communication, um, instrument sterilization, basic patient care, all kinds of different things all wrapped up to one, which is really interesting. A lot of students really enjoy this course. For sure. Yeah. And then we have our workplace and communication skills, which is very, very important for us. MOAs are famous for being great communicators. So we learn in this course actually how to show empathy, how to de-escalate situations, how to work within a team environment, how to be professional. And we learn um, how to work within a diverse population, which we know Canada is very multicultural. So this is a great course to learn how to communicate. And then practicum, which is your hands-on way to prove your skills and hopefully your way to get snapped up into your first professional job in the field. It's a great, great experience. And that is where you're really going to get your hands on. Excellent. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. So next up is employment opportunities. So there's a variety of different locations that most people would associate with employment opportunities like hospital, medical offices and uh, health units. And um, we do get a number of requests from different medical type offices that come to the college because we, they are aware that we offer this program. We also work with different um, divisions of family practice, which is an organization of the family physicians of BC, and they have different um, or they have different units across BC. So we do work with them as well. And I'll just let Kelly add to any of this as well that's on the screen. There are a few opportunities, well, quite a few opportunities now for us that have really changed. So I just wanted to touch on that. So you have the choice of being clinical, which is in a doctor's office, chiropractor's office, um, a specialty office working alongside the physician and the clinical component, or you really have a chance to also be an administrative component. So to become a surgical office assistant or to work in a specialty as an administrative assistant. So it doesn't just box you into one role. We also have schedulers, we have medical billers, um, even workers' compensation, all kinds of things that have a medical legal team. You are also um, opted for those jobs as well. So it definitely isn't just one stream. It's becoming very, very broad, which is super, super exciting. Great, thanks Kelly. So next step, so most of you have applied, so you already know what the steps are, but there is at least one of you that hasn't. So to apply to the program, you go to the Okanagan College webpage and you click on the apply button. And this program is under the Faculty of Continuing Studies. And then the next step after that, you'll re receive an email communication asking you to send documentation to meet the admission requirements, uh, which are listed there of uh, be having your high school graduation or a minimum of 19 years of age, your English 12 with a minimum of 60% and providing negative tuberculin test results. 
And then after that, once you have met your admission requirements, you'll receive an email to um, accept an offer, pay your deposit, and then you'll get registered into the program. So it's essentially three easy steps for this program. And if you have any questions along the way, Leslie and myself are happy to help you with any of those. So, at, and we have our contact information on the last slide, but at this time, um, now it's your turn. Are there any questions that any of you have? Um, you can put them into the Q&A and we can um, allow you to ask them live. If you'd rather ask them live, you just have to raise your hand, whichever you prefer. And I think at this point, I will move to the next slide, just so that you have our contact information there. If, if you're looking for that, the phone number or emails for Leslie or myself. Leslie is our program assistant, and she is the one that looks after all the admission requirements and the student registration and payments. So, and I see we have a question from Katrina. I am working full time, so how will this work for me during the practicum? So that's a great question, Katrina. And um, basically the practicum, um, we would work with you to find the best schedule possible, but you would actually have to um, possibly take time off depending on what the practicum schedule would be. There sometimes there are some options to work around a different schedule that can, um, prevent you from having to take too much time off work, but you are expected to uh, make yourself available to cover the full 90 hours in your practicum placement. So um, I'm not sure if that answered that entirely. So if it didn't, just ask again and we'll pick that up. And Keely is asking, what happens if you miss a class? Is there a way to access the recording? So yes, uh, we typically record all of our classes and you can access that right on the Moodle shell. You'll be provided with information uh, prior to the course beginning of how to access Moodle and uh, you'll be able to access all your courses in there in advance and do advanced reading, whatever the requirements may be. And, um, and definitely catch up on um, classes that you may with, miss. We encourage you not to miss any classes where, uh, where possible and maybe also get maybe a, a class partner so that if you do miss anything that maybe they can help you with catching up on missed assignments or, or whichever. Um, anything you want to add to that, Kelly? No, that's perfect. That's what we do um, in the classroom online environment is we I really encourage that um, a buddy system and making connections within your classroom because it really does that you need to be away or if children are sick or something pops up you're late for a shift at work or what have you it's always good to have a partner that can fill you in if especially if the next day is not an instructor day perfect thanks and will the practicum be sometime around July so Practicums will take some place after July, between July and September, typically. It just depends on where we're placing you and what their availability is. And then uh, if you have any restrictions on what your availability is. So it won't necessarily happen the day after your class ends. It'll happen at some point after that. So, and that's something that we review in a little more detail um, in throughout the program. Now Cindy, I sorry, yes. I just wanted to say um, Shinda had put a couple of um, questions in the ch in yes. the chat box as well. I didn't want those to get missed. Thank you. Yes, I just saw those. Right. So Shinder's asking, where does the practicum take place? So it is going to take place at any of those type of medical offices that we talked about for employment opportunities. Specifically, where will they take place? Uh, we recognize that all of you uh, reside in different areas, so it could be anywhere across BC. So we try to place you um, in your hometown if we're able to, or city, or as close as possible as we can, because I know we've had some students from quite small communities, so we just try to place you at the 
a larger center close that has a suitable placement available. And uh, we've actually had placements um, across Canada as well. So um, uh, that's always a possibility. And the hours for your practicum really just depend on the hours of the clinic or site that your practicum will take place at. So they all could be quite different. Um, so I don't know, Kelly, if you want to talk about that a little bit more. No, well, that's exactly right. So we're definitely going to work with you. It's something I actually love to talk about and discuss when we get a little bit further down the line. I like to kind of take your interests and see where you feel you would be a good fit. And then we try to work collaboratively and see if we can find something that matches that mold. It can never be a promise. You know, sometimes things happen and we're not able to place you, you know, in your perfect spot, but we definitely um, take all of those accommodations in mind and work with you on that. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Now, Katrina is asking, will there be a session in class on campus? So no, uh, there won't be any classes on campus. This is a fully online program and people are able to take this from all across BC and um, and other parts of Canada have even taken it. So yes, that isn't a requirement for this program at all. Um, it is in other programs that we offer, but this one is strictly online and your classes start at a scheduled time and typically have um, uh, a different type of uh, structure depending on who your instructor is and what their their teaching style is. Great questions tonight. I, Cindy, I just wanted to say, well, uh, looking at the admission requirements, I'm not sure if it included the criminal record check on that slide. No, it did not. So I just wanted to make sure students uh, recognize that there was a criminal record check a clear check required in order to go into to practicum yes so that's something that that's not a requirement you have to do in advance of being accepted into the program normally what we'll do is once you're provided with acceptance into the program it'll be conditional to you uh, providing us with a clear criminal record check um, we don't do the checks through the RCMP any longer. We do them through the BC Ministry of Public Safety and Solicitor General's Criminal Records Review Office. So Leslie will send out information on how to do that uh, once she has conditionally admitted you to the program. Thanks, Jill, for pointing that out. So I just wanted to um, ask another poll question at this time, just curious as to where does everybody reside? So I'll just launch that now. And it'll just give us an idea for those that have applied to the program as to uh, maybe where the practicums will be taking place. And I'll just share the results. So out of the people that did respond, uh, we have half in the North Okanagan, half in the Central, and then one in the Shushwap Revelstoke. So all within the area, so that's excellent. And I believe we have um, another question. And I'll let Kelly answer this one. Keely, she says, are there any exams? It's a great question. Yes. <laughs> There's always exams. So there are, but I love I really am a hands-on approach in that way that I like to prep you for that and give you reviews and kind of prepare you for that examination um, test period. Because this is a medical program, there are definitely going to be exams and quizzes and reviews and things like that. But so if you have tests or exam anxiety, there's nothing to be worried about. A lot of people do, especially in an online environment, but we will bridge when we get to it. 
And I'll just add on to that, um, that we do have a lot of services available to students. So if you do suffer from test anxiety or certain things like that, uh, we do actually have some workshops that are excellent. We have a lot of online resources as well, which we can refer you to. And um, if that is something that maybe you have a diagnosed um, within your health, uh, you could get an accommodation for that. So we're always open to helping our students be successful in the program. So don't hesitate to reach out to Leslie or myself about that. So I'm just gonna stop sharing um, the slide because I think everybody's probably got the contact information if they wanted it and bring it back here. So at this point, if there's no other questions, I think I will take this opportunity to thank everybody for joining us to, to uh, listen to our presentation on the Medical Office Assistant Information Session. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in class in January. And do reach out to Leslie or myself if you have any further questions. Um, Kelly, Jill, and I will stay on for a couple of minutes here uh, in case there's anybody that has any other questions that they wish to be answered. But at this time, if, if you have better things to do, feel free to um, uh, sign off. And oh, you're welcome, Brittany. Thank you so much. Yes. And, Yes, do take care over the holidays to everybody out there. Thank you.